Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, today, you know, we are usually on the radio, but today we had a big snowstorm in Chicago, so we'll actually be streaming live from the office today. Um, welcome, welcome everyone. Usually we do the show Money Talks on WGHC 98.3 FM, your voice, your music, your station, and also where change matters. Um, today we won't be live on the radio, but we are live on Facebook, and yes, this is recorded. This will be posted on my um, YouTube channel. This will also be posted on my Facebook Live, IG Live. Please share. Please, um, please share the content. Today I'll be walking through some some principles, some concepts about real estate, right? Buying real estate, how to build massive, massive wealth through multifamily real estate. So we'll get down and dirty to it. Uh, we will be covering a lot of stuff today. And it's um, I think I think it's gonna be something that will be game changing. So what I'll be doing is I'll be sharing with you an experience that I've had. I'll actually be sharing two deals that we did last year and basically be able to walk you through the numbers, walk you through how much each property is cash flowing how you can get in the game as well with as little as three and a half percent down payment, which can be also subsidized by the government. As a reintroduction, my name is Jeff Badu. I'm a parallel entrepreneur and a wealth multiplier, founder and CEO of Badu Enterprises LLC, which is a multinational conglomerate in the finance industry. And what we do is we provide a suite of financial services, including our marquee company, which is Badu Tax Services, and that's the firm that does tax preparation, tax planning, and tax representation for individuals and businesses across all 50 states in the U.S., and we also have clients in over 20 countries at the moment. Happy tax season. We'd be more than happy to help you out with your taxes. You can feel free to check us out at badutaxservices.com. Once again, that's badutaxservices.com, B-A-D-U, taxservices.com. And on top of that, um, which is the point of today's discussion, I run Badu Investments LLC. And that's a multifamily rental property company. We acquire rental properties, multifamily, primarily on the south side of Chicago. Um, you know, we, we acquire apartment buildings and buildings of that nature in order to help restore the communities in order to provide better housing, better management, better tenant management. And also we do education. So we actually do educate those communities as well. You know, so we do a lot of financial literacy. We actually have our summer program that's coming out um, this summer. I'm starting in June. So if you know somebody who's age six to 18, who's in a underserved or underrepresented community, feel free to let them know and we'll be more than happy to help them out. All right, and then with the Badu Investments, um, all we do is buy rental properties. We don't flip, we don't do any of that, right? So let me just share a little bit of my story in real estate. So full disclosure, my parents have been in real estate for quite some time, over 30 years or so. Um, and me personally, I got started with my journey back in 2017, so a year after forming Badu Tax Services, I decided to go out and um, launch my second business plan, which is Badu Investments. And I struggled. I struggled. I struggled. I struggled. Um, I started wholesaling. Well, first and foremost, I started doing research. I took all the real estate courses you can imagine. Um, I did a three-day with Armando. Shout out to Armando. Awesome, awesome guy, by the way. And then we did Dan, uh, Merrill with um, Fortune Builders. And we did that for one day, you know, so I was educating myself and everything I learned, I took notes. I still use the same principles that I learned from those education. So my number one thing for you to, to really invest in yourself um, or invest today, like somebody asked me, I have $10,000, what should I do with it? Invest in yourself, invest in the education, invest in the knowledge, attend, you know, things like this where we're teaching you for free, you don't have to pay for this right now. Teaching you for free how to build massive wealth through real estate, multifamily real estate. All right, so I started, I struggled. 
and then I started doing wholesale. So wholesale is the process where you're basically getting a good deal, you're packaging it up, and then you're selling that deal, not the property itself, but you're selling the deal to another investor in exchange for compensation, a finder's fee, let's call it. So I started doing that, almost landed my first big wholesale deal. Um, almost landed a $20,000 assignment fee on a house that's um, close to Obama's house. And unfortunately, that didn't go through. So we, so I, I, I went back to square one, right? I, I had to essentially, man, it was frustrating. I went literally a whole like six months without closing a single deal. I'm, I'm like, something's got to give. So my job today is to help you avoid that mistake that I made. And there's nothing wrong with wholesaling, by the way. What I'm saying, though, is there are much better ways to get into real estate with little to no money down. And the reason why we don't want a lot of our own money tied into real estate is because of the power of leverage, which is the ability to buy less or the ability to buy more with less of our own money. So it is important. Leverage is always important. I'll show you a deal that we did at 75% um, leverage and a deal that we did at 96.5% leverage, essentially, or the FHA 3.5% down payment. So I the wholesaling thing didn't go too well for me. And then I got lucky. Shout out to um, you know one of my friends, Corey, was able to find me a deal. And this was in Chicago Heights. This was end of 2017, literally leading into 2018. Found our first deal, closed on the first property, essentially. And that <clears throat> that deal was on in Chicago Heights. That was a flip property. Let's just say it didn't go too well, right? It, it, it didn't go too well. I, I struggled. The contractor that I hired, unfortunately, wasn't the most experienced, so he made some mistakes. Um, biggest one was the plumbing. There was a big plumbing issue on the house and so we have to tear down the entire plumbing. So I've seen a house where I've torn everything out of it, like every single thing down to its bare bones of wires and, you know, pipes. And then reconstructed the walls and everything on it with some drywall and, you know, just um, touching it up with some, with some paint. So we had to replace the entire plumbing. A deal that was supposed to make me money cost me a lot of money. It was a lesson learned, but then I took it to my next deal, which was also a flip. Of course, I didn't learn my lesson the first time. So that second deal was a flip. That one was in um, South Shore, right? Shout out to South Shore in Chicago. Love that area, by the way. And in the South Shore neighborhood, basically, it was, it, it was a great opportunity, a tiny little house, and ultimately was able to rehab the house, but it went over budget was using a hard money lender, charging me extremely high fees. Next thing you know, we can't flip the house because the value of the property was much lower than what we anticipated. So we had to hold it as a rental and we ended up with a loan at about 7 9% actually interest rate, 30 year loan at 9% interest rate. So I'm like, man, something's got to change. What, like, what? Why is it that I'm struggling so much in real estate? Why can't I get my hands on a good deal? And I found out that you know, not everyone can. Not everyone' strategy is basically the same strategy I'm telling you today is may not be for you. Right, if you have an appetite for risk, then go ahead and flip properties. I don't. I had trouble sleeping at night when I was flipping. Nowadays. Thankfully, I thank God that I'm able to sleep peacefully at night. We have a property manager who's overseeing all the properties as we speak. You know, we have our team, we have everything in place. So fast forward to 2018, landed a three unit with one of my business partners. And that deal was, was great. I'm like, wow, this is a slam dunk. Did it with an FHA loan. Right, three and a half percent down payment, and let's just say right now the house is cash flowing about three thousand gross income per month, and as far as expenses, it's about two thousand a month. We're coming out even about a thousand a month, so we're coming out about twelve thousand a month. If you take out depreciation, which is the biggest D word on the planet, um, depreciation is the process 
of essentially deducting the cost of the property over time, you know, so depreciation is essentially the process where you're deducting the purchase price of the property over time. And it looks like somebody made a comment called to get taxes. Yeah, send me a DM, send me a message actually. Um, we actually do have a, a tax preparation team, so I'm not the one that when you call, you usually get to me directly. But you can feel free to send me a message. I'll respond back right away, and that's on my own Instagram. Just shoot me a message, we'll get something in the books. Uh, we go by appointment basis, so we don't actually go by um, you know phone calls or anything like that. So, uh, back to the story. Yeah, this house, we found the this three unit. It's in Brighton Park, up and coming, south side of Chicago neighborhood, you know. And yeah, I mean, that's that property was doing great. I'm like, wow, okay, I finally found the way. This was bought using a 3.5% down payment FHA loan and it's cash flowing. Gross, $3,000 a month. Expenses, $2,000 a month. And it's bringing in about 1000 net. Like after all expenses are factored in, it's bringing in about $1,000 a month, um, which is good, right? That, that's good. And today, by the way, I'll show you real, I'll go through a deal that we did last year. Um, actually, two deals. One is a smaller deal. Another is a bigger deal. And my goal today is to educate you on walking through a real estate deal, the things we look for. We just looked at a deal today, and it turns out that it's significantly overvalued because the rents, the monthly rent that was on what's called the offer memorandum, which is presented every time a, um, a lease, uh, basically an agent is looking to sell a house, and it's an apartment building. They have to present an offer memorandum. I looked at the offer memorandum and the building looked great, right? The numbers look great. The rents look great. Everything looked great. And then I noticed that the rents currently were above market. I'm like, okay, that's kind of a red flag. Why in the world would a building on the south side of Chicago, South Shore, that people are paying above market rent when I know that I got buildings in South Shore that are not paying above market? So that was a red flag. So I was like, let me look at the rent rule. Lo and behold, they didn't provide a rent roll. A rent roll is simply a schedule of all rent payments on the building. So it allows me to see who's paying what, what tenant is paying, essentially. And if we really get down to it, I can know who's essentially behind on payments. Um, I can know all these things and I can use that as bargaining power when I'm making my offer. All right, so I'll be going through some examples today and just showing you a few a few tips and tricks that you can use. And this is multifamily real estate. So if you're looking, if, if you're, if you thought today we we're talking about flips or anything like that, please, you know, this, this is not that I've had my fair share of flips and I don't like it personally. I don't have the appetite for it. I just don't, it's just not for me. Maybe it's for you, but it's not for me. Um, and I know when you go to real estate seminars, they always talk about, Oh, flip this house and this and that. And I'm like, no, I mean, it's just not for me. I'm all about rental property, real estate. Um, so basically, you know, I was so fortunate. We found that deal in Brighton Park. It's doing great. Brighton Park is up and coming. Values are going up in that neighborhood. The house is going up in value. You know, I, we we're planning to refinance this year, but instead we're actually going to wait until next year because we want the house to build up a bit more in equity and it's cash flowing pretty nice. Tenants pay on time. We haven't had a late payment in such a long time on that house. Um, one of the units is actually um, with Airbnb. So we have an Airbnb unit, and then we have two units that are long-term tenants. Um, and by the way, anything I say today, right, is of my own opinion, of my own experience. It is not the experience of anybody else but myself. You know, so just keep that in mind. I'm sharing with you what I've learned in real estate. We've been fortunate enough to be able to control now, right? Control 57 units within the Badu Investments brand. Um, and we're, we're looking for more. Our target this year is about 100, right? 100 units. So question, do you recommend getting rental properties always with tenants currently in them? Yeah, I'd say no problem. I would say request the application. Um, look at the tenant's application, do a rescreen and make sure they're a good, solid tenant. Look at the lease, see if they're currently up to date on rent. 
Are they behind? Do they need to be evicted? Uh, right now in Chicago, you basically cannot evict a tenant. Technically, across the nation, you can't evict a tenant legally, at least. You, know, you can certainly illegally do it, right? And there's plenty of ways to do that. But legally, you cannot evict a tenant in the city of Chicago right now. So you kind of have to keep the tenants. You know, I'm sure there's ways around it and ways you could do it. But when you're buying a building, it's an investment, right? It's a serious, serious, serious investment. Right? The type of buildings we're buying now, they're not small time investments. They're retirement plans, basically, that we're buying. We're buying them for our, our kids' kids' futures. Uh, we're not just buying just single family homes or condos. We're buying big, giant buildings. Um, so with that, let me just give you a few tips and tricks, and then we'll walk through two deals that we did last year. I'll walk you through the numbers, how it made sense, why in the world we decided to do those deals. Um, and these are our two top performing properties right now that we have, right? We bought, um, how many we buy last year? Bought three buildings last year, and I'll be showing you two. We're actually supposed to close on the fourth one, but unfortunately it fell through because lenders just didn't come to their senses. Um, so that, that's a story for another day, but I'll be sharing with you two types. The reason why I chose two, one of them is a low down payment and another one is a higher down payment. You know, when you're starting out, you probably want to go with the lower down payment. Trust me. All right. So just a few tips and tricks. And by the way, big shout out to Grant Cardone. Um, he's the guy that actually taught me about multifamily real estate. And just watching his videos, just going through his real estate course and everything like that, taught me a lot. He taught me so much about multifamily real estate. The first thing is you can use a site called LoopNet, LoopNet, L-O-O-P-N-E-T, to find apartment deals. And that's for beginners. Somebody who's looking, who's just starting, go to LoopNet, filter for multifamily. Um, and that's for apartments, big apartments. Anything that's four unit and below, you want to go to Redfin is pretty good. So I like Redfin, R-E-D-F-I-N. Um, that's actually how we found one of our deals that I'll be going through today. And then there's also Trillo, I'm sorry, um, Zillow and Trulia. So those are all great sites. But if you want to buy the big projects, the big properties, LoopNet is pretty good. At least at finding them. <clears throat> and then you do want to get to know the agent so that they can send you even better deals. All right, another thing to consider is cap rate, capitalization rate. So I'll be going through some terms today. Cap rate is, the definition is the rate of return on your investment if you paid the building in cash, right? So if you paid this building in cash, how much would you return? It's essentially the net operating income of the building divided by the purchase price. So net operating income equals the income of the building, money that's coming in, and then the expenses of the building. So income are rents, laundry income. Expenses include things like mortgage interest, utilities, um, basically repairs, right? Management fees, that's a, that's a big one. And so you want to consider all these expenses to get down to your net operating income. And then another thing is vacancy. Vacancy is the chance that people won't be in the building, you know, in, in the unit. 6% is typical. That's a good vacancy. And your most of your offering memorandums, I've seen a 6% discount. So it's basically a discount on the price of the building. Um, typically, six, you know, 5 to 6% is pretty decent. And then typically your net operating income, it should be at least... You know, I would say about 50% of your of your income. So if the builder makes 100000 in rent, then your net operating income should be about 50000 Right. So after you take away all expenses, you should have about 50000 That's called the 50% rule, essentially. And then another thing to note is gross rent, including vacancies, minus expenses, equals net operating income. The income... Think about it like a profit and loss, the money that's flowing through in the bank account every single month, essentially. And then NOI, that's net operating income for short, um, divided by the cap rate equals purchase price. Another way to put it is that 
net operating income divided by purchase price equals the cap rate, right? So just um, something to keep in mind. And then somebody asked a question, what's the site you said before Redfin? It's called LoopNet, L-O-O-P-N-E-T. That's where you find big, big, big apartment buildings. Um, that's where you find the big stuff. And the net operating income minus the annual debt payment, right? So when you have a building, you have loans on it. Net operating income minus the debt service, they call it, divided by the cash invested. So NOI minus the debt on the deal, monthly or annual debt payments, divided by the cash that you put in, it's what's called cash on cash return. Cash on cash return is the money that I put into the deal. How much was my return on investment on that physical cash? I'll show you a deal where our cash <laughs> return on investment was literally 97%. Cash on cash, 97% in the first year because it was an FHA loan. I'll show you real numbers today. These are real life numbers. Um, typically, we aim for a 20% or higher cash on cash return. The lower the down payment, the higher the cash on cash return typically. And then for cap rate, we like to see 10% or above. We buy only on the south side of Chicago in areas like Auburn, Gresham, South Shore, Chatham, those areas, they typically have about a 10% or higher cap rate. Cap rate is basically what the building is trading at, like what's the return on investment on the building. Um, it, it's a very subjective thing, but the formula itself is pretty spot on. All right, so a few other things, typical improvements that you make on a house. So these are just general concepts. Um, flooring, you wanna make sure you update the flooring, right? And it's okay to put laminate on there. It just makes it nicer and it helps increase your rent. Appliances, make sure you get stainless steel appliances. It's always nice. And then kitchen, the countertops, you know, granite countertops typically. Just make it look nice, make it look modern. You'll get a lot more rent um, compared to what you are currently collecting. So in real estate, in these apartment buildings, the only way we can increase the value is if we increase the rent or we reduce the expenses. Overall increase in the net operating income of the deal. Always find ways to increase rent. Always, always, always. Whether you can basically, I mean, not in a, in, you know, not in an unethical way, but basically find a way to increase the rent by making sure that you are keeping it up to date, right? You're not having all these big repairs or anything. There's a thing called slum lawyers and you don't want that. And then property managers typically get paid about 10% of gross rent on a smaller deal. On a bigger deal, 5%, right? Five five to 8%. So if, if it's a big deal, you can get 5% typically. And then let's see here. All right. So just uh, what I'm doing now is I'm basically, some of the notes that I've taken on deals before I bought them, I'm giving you the notes right here. So these are some of the critical points. Expenses are usually 40 to 50% of the monthly rent. Um, and then also another thing to note, so net operating income determines how much debt you can get on the deal. So that's a big factor. Net operating income, the lenders really do care about this. And by the way, when we buy an apartment building, it's still a residential building. We just have to use a commercial loan. A commercial loan is used on a property that has more than four units. You cannot get a loan, a residential loan on a property that has more than four units, typically, at least not to my knowledge that you can. Um, so anything four units and below, residential. So that's where you go to your bank. Um, you know, that, that's where you would essentially go out and get a loan. All right, and we do have lenders listening right now. Shout out to Mike Schwale, um, you know, from Fairway. And he's, I believe he's tuning in right now. All right, so <clears throat> another thing to keep in mind, if you can get interest-only debt, then go, go ahead and do that. Always use worst-case scenario numbers. This is something that I took lightly when I started, but always use worst-case scenarios. So if on the lower end, the property can earn $750 a month in rent, but on the upper end, it can earn $850, use the $750 number. Right, especially if that's what it's currently earning. Don't 
put in your numbers that it's going to earn 850 because that's the best case scenario. Use worst case scenario numbers. You have to be very, very careful in this game of real estate. All right. So let's see what other points can I mention here? All right. So let's see. Always verify the numbers on an offer memorandum. I just shared with you an example today. You know, it's a building that's being sold for $1.4 million. And essentially, it's actually worth, I, just, I ran the numbers. As an accountant, I run numbers. I looked at the financials, right? The financials tell me the story of the building. The offer memorandum tells me the building makes 25000 a month in rent. The financials tell me 20000 a month. I'm like, okay, that's a problem. So I, I contacted the agent. I said, can I get a rent roll? Can I see what the history of historic rent payments have been so I can verify? Because I'm not paying $1.4 million for a building that's only worth $1 million. You should not do that. Because when you try to sell it, then you're going to be in trouble. As a matter of fact, the bank is not going to underwrite the deal if they find out that this building is overvalued. It's simple. The bank... I, one thing I like about banks... Right is um, and I do have a love hate relationship with lenders and banks, but they do kind of rescue you from bad deals, so that's good news. Luckily, I've done this quite a few times, so I know what to look at. So I verified the income and expenses on the rent roll. I I just look use basically common sense analysis. Okay, why is it that we're in COVID nineteen and they're collecting more than average market rent? It doesn't make any sense. Like, how is it that we're in a pandemic and you're collecting more than average market rent? And I'm like, okay, something is, something is a bit fishy. And then I see they didn't provide me a rent roll. Okay, now that's really fishy. And this is a group that I, I've dealt with before, by the way. They always send me the rent roll. They're like, hey, Jeff, here's a rent roll. You know, here's um, everything. Ironically, a deal that we're about to do, they sent me the rent roll. Everything looked good. Sent it to the lender. Lender said it looked good. We were ready to, you know, to do the deal. And then the seller backed out and said he's not looking to sell anymore. Or he's he's on hold, basically. So you just have to watch out. Don't. It's better to not do a deal than to do a bad deal. That's one thing I've learned. So if the numbers don't make sense, if they don't add up, and not necessarily overthinking. Don't overthink the process. But if it doesn't make sense, right, one thing to look for what are, the, what are the rents being collected right now compared to the market? It's an easy analysis. Compared to the market, if it's over the market, ask why. If it's under the market, it's okay. I mean, that's an opportunity for us to come in, increase rent, right? Sometimes those units need updates though. And that's why you have to get an inspection on every single building that you buy. It is very, 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 very important. Um, so always use worst case scenario numbers. And then there's a thing called the gross rent multiplier or GRM. And that should be no more than 14. Um, that's basically the rent, you know, um, essentially it's it's basically the rent that's multiplied by a certain figure to see what the price should be. And then let's see here. Oh yeah, when there's when there's cranes in the air, beware. So if you see a lot of construction around you, please beware. It can bring down the price of your property. If you can't sell, refinance. Simple. That's what we have to do on a South Shore deal. All right. And then let's see here. And then cap rate is determined by the market you're in. So it's one of these magical sort of numbers. All right. And then let's see here. Okay. So those are just a few notes of things that I think it's important to note. Now let's walk through a deal. Let's walk through an actual deal. And if you need details on how to buy properties with little to no money down using loans such as the FHA loan, I do have another segment. I won't go too deep into the details, but let me actually walk you through a deal that we did last year. All right, so this deal is in Chicago Lawn on the south side of Chicago. Um, and basically, right, this was, we bought this property literally during, like right after tax season, essentially. And the purchase price on this building was three fifty five nine nine nine. That's pretty much what they listed it at. So three fifty five nine 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 is just a technique. It's really three fifty six. All right, 
So with this deal, it's an FHA loan. FHA means Federal Housing Administration, 3.5% down payment. And here's a secret. We always, always, always ask for a closing credit in real estate. So basically, they gave me a closing credit of $5,000 to help me close the deal. And the, the seller don't, doesn't really care why. All right, so I said, hey, I'll give you three sixty one nine nine nine. That's the price I'll give you. If you basically give me a closing credit and you essentially, um, you know, basically I'm, inc I'm willing to increase the purchase price of the property, but give me a closing credit so it can, it can balance out a bit. So a net, it's three fifty five nine nine nine. This is a four unit building, big, massive building. We can actually turn it into a six unit because there's, there's, um, there's, there's basically space in the basement where we can create two more units in the building. It's a big building. Massive, massive building. Let me see if I can find the square footage on this building. Uh, let's see here. No, that is not the correct square footage. Absolutely not. Yeah, you always have to watch out for inaccuracies on listings. It's very important. So let's run the numbers on this deal. So I went on a site called Rental Meter. First thing I need to know is what's the income on the property? I went on a site called Rental Meter. This is a four unit building. Um, it is an FHA loan, so it gets a little political with this one. But let's just say this building, I found out it can make me $4,500 a month in income, right? And then expenses, let's go through the expenses really quick. We always put a number for vacancy. That's two twenty five. So five percent vacancy was two two hundred and twenty five dollars a month. Then capital expenditures, maybe repairs and improvements, we put down at ninety dollars a month. Then there's private mortgage insurance, known as PMI. That's two hundred dollars a month. And you'll know this when the lender sends you some sort of pre approval or something like that. Insurance, you know, a hundred dollars a month, you can get away with that. Principal and interest, very important number, $1,640.11. And that was determined using a mortgage calculator. You can find one for free on Google. Repairs, $225 a month. Okay, yeah, just uh, I, we always allocate about 5% for repairs. Water and sewer in the city of Chicago, you have to pay the building's water bill. Garbage, you also have to pay for that. Fifty. So water and sewer was $100 a month. Garbage, $50 a month. Management, I have a property manager. We paid them 10%. So they're earning $450. So that's 10% of 4500 um, $4, And then property taxes at $246 a month. Some of these numbers you can easily verify based on, for example, property taxes on, your, on the county's website. Uh, management, 10% on a small building, right? And then vacancy, 5%. So some of these are easier than others. Total expenses, $3,326.11. So that's total after everything is considered. Everything is considered. So on that deal, if you do 4,500 minus 3,326, you get a net monthly cash flow, net net, after all the expenses are factored in, you get $1,173 deposited into your bank account every single month. That's a pretty good deal. And by the way, this is an FHA loan. All I had to put down was $12,459.97. Right, that, that's a pretty big one. So my, my annual net operating income on the building was $33,768. Total cash needed to close this deal. Right, I have here $18,460, but I received a closing credit. So I'm down to $12,459. My cash on cash return on the deal, 76%, 76%. Now here's one thing to note about this deal. For one, it has section eight housing, meaning that the rents are guaranteed, are backed by the government. We usually don't really do that, but it's a nice freebie. I mean, they deposit it every single month. So we got section eight housing, 4,500 guaranteed. As a matter of fact, the monthly rent came out to 5,000 a month because we found out that section eight was willing to pay more, right? So 5,000 a month. And remember in my numbers, I ran 4,500 a month. So I was actually good there. I use rent o meter 
to determine what the monthly rents would be on each property based on a fair market value. And if the, if the landlord sends you a, a rent roll, um, then you can use those numbers as well, but I usually compare it to what the market is doing. This is a 30 year loan, 4% interest rate, and the cap rate was 9.49%. So if I paid it cash, I would get a 9.49% return every year. However, this was an FHA loan, and net net, I actually put down about 10,000 on the deal. And guess what? The next day, rent was deposited into my bank account. And the mortgage wasn't due for 30 days after that. So I put in 10, got 5,000 at closing. And so I really only put in $5,000 into that deal from day one. We love buildings that cash flow and make money from day one. This is how I found success in real estate, right? Using, so on this loan, it was an FHA loan. I did not have an FHA loan in my own name at the time. So I decided to utilize that. Everybody basically gets an opportunity to get an FHA, Federal Housing Administration loan. Um, so this deal was pretty good. Let me just show you some of the numbers on here too. So total annual income is 54,000. We found out we're making more than that. So it's actually 60,000. And then total expenses for the year, 39,914. Total cash flow, 14,087. Cash on cash return, 76%. All right, so the return on my 10,000 that I put in, I got a 76% return on investment. I don't know any stock right now that I could just put in money and get a 76% return. This building allows me to get tax benefits in the form of what's called depreciation. And on this building, we did what's called a cost segregation study, which allowed us to write off about 25% of the building's purchase price, even though we only put down $10,000, 25%. We got to deduct $100,000 on a tax return, right? And we only put down 10,000. I mean, if there's any better investment on the planet than this, I wanna see it. I really wanna see it. Um, and then ultimately, so at the end of, let's say at the end of the 30 year loan, if I were to sell this property, I would make $1.3 million on the deal because prices tend to appreciate over time. Um, the builder would be paid off or I can keep it. At that point, I would make $95,000 in income every year. And then expenses would be $39,000. But the mortgage goes off after that. But we would probably refinance it. So we would get a loan for about $1 million at that point. We can do a refinance. We get $1 million and then we buy four more buildings after that. So we turn $10,000 investment, right? A $10,000 investment into a $1.3 million return. And that's just if I sold it, my profit if I sold the building. As you can see, it's powerful. This stuff is powerful. Where else can you put 10,000 of your own money in exchange for a big giant building? This building is huge. I'm like, man, this thing, we can literally convert into a six unit and we can collect more rent. We can add basement units and collect even more rent. This building is huge. And we're actually planning to put, put some units in the basement, by the way. And you're telling me that only $10,000 can get this building, right? And I'm like, man, this is, this is nice. I'm like, we, we bought a pretty good building. Tenants are still paying. On time, of course, it's Section 8 housing, so it's guaranteed rent. The money comes in every single month, 100% on-time payments, no issues. It gets clear, it's in the bank all day, every day. So this was the Chicago Lawn property, four-unit building, using an FHA loan. Monthly income was projected at 4500 but we ended up getting 5000 And then monthly expenses, about 3500 and ultimately comes out net net about $1,500 a month. Can you imagine what an extra $1,500 a month can do for you? You can, you know, you, you can fund your, your student loans. You can fund um, another house. Maybe you want to buy a house that's for you. That's perfectly fine. 
you can start a, a business or you can save it to buy another property, which is exactly what we did on the next deal. This deal is in Auburn Gresham, which is on the south side of Chicago. After buying a four unit, we said, why stop? Let's go out and buy a 10 unit. And similar to the four unit, this building also has a basement, a nice, big, huge basement that we can turn into an 11th unit. So this building was listed and I'm, I'm literally walking you through everything I look at. So I receive what's called an offer memorandum. You know, it looks something like this essentially. And offer memorandum has the financials. One of the reasons why I like this building over the four unit is because it's transparent. It, it ha they have to show me all the numbers. On a four unit, they don't have to show me anything. I kind of have to go out there and find my own numbers, although you must get the rent roll. You need to have the rent roll all day, every day. The lender's gonna ask you for it. Um, that shows how much rent is coming in every month. You also wanna know who's late, who's on time. You wanna know that stuff to use it as bargaining power when you buy the building. Um, and then, with expenses, you kind of have to guess or you kind of have to go out there and find it. You have to know how much the utilities are, you know, um, property taxes, that's easy. That's on the county's website. Mortgage, that's easy. You can easily use a mortgage calculator to find that. But there's certain numbers on there that's subjective. So with a property like the 10 unit, they have to be very transparent. It has to come in a financial. Basically, it's like you're buying a business. It's in a business plan. It's about 30 pages long. And I just read one today. It took me five minutes to realize there was a red flag on it. Five minutes. I can read through an offer memorandum in just five minutes and see if there's any red flags on it. That's the first thing I look for. So with this building, though, it's a 10-unit building. Um, per the, it was on the market for $460,000, so $460,000. Price per unit, which is a very important number in our firm, um, was forty six thousand per unit. It's a ten unit, so forty four sixty divided by ten is forty six. We usually don't like to go any above anywhere above fifty thousand per unit. As you get bigger buildings, the economies of scale sort of kicks in, and so your price per unit goes lower. Gross rent multiplier. Grant Cardone told me nothing higher than fourteen or it's overpriced. This one was at five point two, which is pretty good. Cap rate right on the money, ten percent. I'm like, we love 10%. Cash on cash return. It is the most important number that I consider when I'm buying a building. 27.21%. I like that. I aim for 20% or higher. And in year one, my total return, money that goes back in my pocket, $31,512. And the debt coverage ratio, meaning how much can your net operating income cover in the monthly debt, this one was at 2.19. You need a debt coverage ratio of at least 1.25%. This one was at 2.19. So, so far it's, it's hitting all the bullet points, right? And then here's important, gross scheduled income. They told me this building makes 88,404. I'm like, okay, let me put an asterisk by that. Let me get back to it. Vacancy, yeah, they put a 5% vacancy as I would expect them. $4,420, okay, that's good. So that means they're giving me a discount, a 5% discount on the building. So the gross income is $83,983, including vacancies. For expenses, this building, so I use the 50% rule, and it met the 50% rule. I don't want expenses more than 50% of the monthly income. So this was at $37,869. It meets the 50% rule. Net operating income, $46,114. I like that number. And then net, like tax, I mean, at the end of the day, when I pay, you know, when I'm paying my mortgage and all that, it's basically bringing $25,000 of pure cash into my pocket, right? Which isn't bad. But the total return, if we add some other things in there, you're actually getting 31000 If you add principal reduction, because as your tenants are paying you every month, they're also paying your mortgage, your principal for you. Um, so with that, you're, you're netting. 31,512 at the end of the day. That's a great number. On a building like this, I need to put down 25% down payment. And I'll show you how we got the money for the down payment in a second. That's the bonus for today. By the way, we usually don't use our own cash when we're buying buildings like this. All right, so down payment, $92,000, right? That's 25% of 460. So 
that means that my loan amount is three sixty eight thousand. My debt service annually, I gotta pay twenty one thousand and eighty three. Monthly is 1756 You can easily verify this on a mortgage calculator. And this number depends on interest rates, depends on the lender you're working with. Principal reduction in year one, 6480 So that's good. So far, so good. All right. And then I get deeper into the numbers. Okay. So I, I look at the expenses. They told me this building is going to cost 37869 in expenses. So I say, okay, what, what expenses are there? Taxes, right? 7,496, easily verifiable. Go on the county's assessor's website, look to see how much the building paid in property taxes for that the, um, the previous year. So, okay, I went on the county's website and it was pretty spot on. Insurance, 3,173. Now this one, they lowballed it. It actually cost us about 4,000 now for the insurance. So, I mean, not, not a big thing there. Gas, unfortunately, each unit, has this um it's kind of complicated basically we still got to pay the gas bill for the building so that was at eight thousand dollars electric only 617 not a whole lot of electric water in the city of chicago you always got to pay the water bill five thousand eight ten scavenger so like you know making sure you're cleaning and all of that um two thousand one hundred seventy two dollars management four thousand one ninety nine and they did that at five percent of gross rent the janitor, $2,000. Decorating, quote unquote, $1,200. So they have to put in all these like silly little expenses, which is good for you. I mean, it's being very conservative. Maintenance, $1,400. Reserves, you always need reserves, $1,200. And then miscellaneous, $600. So at the end of the day, it's going to cost me an expenses, $37,869. That means my net operating income, when I take my $83,984, this includes the vacancies, Minus 37869, it leads to a net operating income of 46,114. So overall, I mean that was it was a pretty good deal. Right? We, we closed on it last year. It took a while to close on a building. It's doing pretty good. It has all the, the ten tenants are still in there. You know, I believe there's one tenant that's not paying on time. Always watch out for that tenant. And unfortunately. Unfortunately, this was a mistake on my end. You live and learn. Learn from the mistakes of others. I got the rent roll, but unfortunately, it was sent the most updated rent roll. So apparently, they didn't send me an updated rent roll. The rent roll showed that there were two tenants in there um, that were not paying on time. Let's just say that when we got the building, one of those tenants started paying on time. You know, they got their act together. And another tenant, you know, like one thing that's very important, always educate your tenants. There's a lot of stimulus money out there. So what we did is we sent them, hey, these are the programs out there if you need help paying rent. There's rental assistance, rental relief. Some of our tenants got it last year. And there's another one that just came out in the second stimulus package, which hasn't really been released to the, um, to the states yet. We'll definitely be applying for that for some of our tenants. And then there's a third stimulus package coming, which will have more rental relief. I mean, so many people are at risk of eviction right now. It's crazy. So always educate them. If they're having trouble paying, send them like, hey, here's a program to help. Help me help you, basically. So with that being said, right now in that building, we have one tenant who's not paying us. We haven't collected a single rent payment since we got the building. And it's okay. This building is still cash flowing positive every month. We got nine other tenants that are paying on time. I'll take that every, all day, every day. 90% collection rate. That's pretty good. On the south side of Chicago. Oh man, that's pretty good. Um, so, and compared to our South Lawn deal or Chicago Lawn deal, 100% collection rate because it's section eight, it's backed by the government. They pay you every month, direct deposit, Money ends up in your bank account um, and, and it covers lifestyle, right? That, so that money, right? So it, it's not really money that you even need to spend, but it can cover your bills. It can cover your student loans. It can cover your, um, your main home. Maybe you have a main home or a secondary home. It can cover your life insurance policies. It can cover your kids' education. It can cover so much. $1,500 a month net can do quite a bit, you know? And with this property, 
instead of fifteen hundred a month, this one is doing give or take about twenty five hundred or so every month, um, which is pretty good, right? This is this is all pretty good. So hopefully, let's see what time we're at. We're at seven fifty three. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Please feel free to post your questions. Today, what we went through was um, multifamily, how to build massive wealth through multifamily real estate. I started off by sharing my struggles when I started in real estate, almost gave up on the thing and was able to find a business partner who's trustworthy. I went to school with him. We're still business partners today. Got the three unit building. And then, you know, and, and just kept going after that. Then we ended up with a, you know, this four unit, which is converted to a six unit. Then a 10 unit, which is converted to 11 unit. Then an eight unit, which is converted to a nine unit, right? And, and then we just keep going up. We just keep going from there. And by the way, the down payment, the down payment comes from another loan. So for example, SBA, Small Business Administration Loan, right? Or there's private lenders that will lend you money for your real estate business. You know, we call that gap funding. So a commercial lender doesn't really care where you get your money from. They just want to know that you can close the deal. So you do have to show them you have this money on this deal. We put down $92,000. Um, actually, it came out. Yeah, actually, we wrote a check for about $90,000. Um, we got some credits and, you know, Thing, incentives, things of that nature. No closing costs, by the way. Always ask for a closing cost credit. Always, never pay closing costs. It, it's a waste, just ask the seller. So on this deal, we actually closed on it for 480 and we asked for a $20,000 closing credit, you know, to get them down to the 460 that they were targeting. Um, and the appraisal came back at 480, thankfully, right? So it's, um, so we literally bought this building with none of our own cash, none of our own money out of pocket. We took out a loan and we're using the monthly rent, the monthly cash flow that we're earning to pay off or pay down that loan each month. And we're still sitting nice cash flowing. In about five, 10 years, this building is gonna go up in value to about a million dollars, pretty easily. I can refinance it, take out whatever money I put into it, which is none, we just found that out. Um, and I can buy three more, or I can buy four more. That's the power of real estate, it's called leverage. It's called infinite expansion, the multiplication. And shout out to the book, Infinite Expansion, How to Infinitely Expand Your Vision of Abundance. That's available on Amazon right now or the website, jeffbadu.com. And yeah, um, somebody mentioned, save this life. I'm looking to buy my first home. Yeah, check out that FHA. The, Federal Housing Administration, if I was to go back in time, I would do a 5% conventional, all right? I would do a 5% conventional loan where you can buy up to four units with a 5% down payment and then maybe wait about six months to a year and then do an FHA loan on another four unit. So now you got eight units and then on your third property, you roll it into maybe a 10, a 15, you know, nine unit, whatever it is, use the money you've made from that those two buildings and buy a big building, a bigger building. Now you have three buildings. And I mean, you could pretty much retire. I'm very fortunate and thankful to say that I don't have to work another day in my life if I truly chose not to. Right? And that, to me, that feels good. I've had days where I've doubted, you know, doing taxes. That's just, that's just the life of, of an entrepreneur. Um, so to be able to buy these buildings, to be able to do deals like this where you're not really putting in any of your own cash, I mean, that's pretty big, right? And on this this building, and we're, so this is live. This is stuff that's happening. This building that's listed at 1.4 million that is worth, in my opinion, based off what I see, worth a million. We're not putting any money down on that either because we're using leverage other people's money to buy the building, aka bank's money. Jamil says, that's awesome. I also heard it's kind of rare to get 100% occupancy every time. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it's rare, but on the south side of Chicago, it's so easy. I mean, it's so easy. These buildings, I mean, they're about 750 a month in rent, 800 a month in rent. They're one bedrooms, maybe two bedrooms or three at most one to two bathrooms, 
It's typically for a single family, um, you know, maybe somebody with a child or even a married couple. So they're not like, it's not like you're running out a luxury condo on, <laughs> on downtown Chicago. No, we don't like those buildings, by the way. Because when, when all hell breaks loose, guess what? They get hit the hardest because their prices here, where we're buying, we're buying here. So if we go here, we're happy. If you go down here, we're still collecting rent. We'll wait it out a bit. We'll wait out the market. No problem at all. All right. So another question. Do you need a management company if you're only doing one or three properties? Yes. Yeah. Don't ever manage your own real estate. Don't do it. Trust me. Don't do it. Find a good, reputable property management. Do not, and I repeat, do not ever, ever, ever manage your own properties. It is a headache and it is a nightmare. You don't want to be the person that you get a call from a tenant at 2 a.m. saying the toilet is clogged. I can't do what I got to do on the toilet. You don't want to do that. Trust me. We got a management team. We paid them a nice amount every year. You know, we have an in-house management team and they take care of all of that. I can be on vacation. I can be in the Bahamas. I can be in, you know, wherever. I don't have to worry about that stuff because I got a team that's overseeing it. I'll comfortably pay them 5 to 10%. I'm happy. I'm like, hey, take it. You want to take away all my headaches from me? Take it. Never manage your own real estate. It is the number one, one of the, the, one of the, the top reasons why landlords get out the game early is because they just don't know how to manage. And absolutely, shout out to Jamil Warren. And then let's see here. Is this all in your infinite expansion book? No, it is not. But I do share something in my book, The Legendary Asset, Six Reasons Why You Should Own Real Estate. Remember, the best investment you can make, and we got just about 30 seconds. We'll end it here in 30 seconds. The best investment you can make on the planet is in yourself. It is not in real estate. It is not in life insurance. It is not in a business. It is in yourself. It is in your education. So with that, I've written three books. First one that you should read, Infinite Expansion, How to Infinitely Expand Your Vision of Abundance, just to get your mind right, just to get you in that mindset. And then we get into, okay, well, you've told me about getting my mind right, well, how do I build a business? That's where we go into the seven figures, right? Seven figures, how to become a millionaire. That was my second book, or second book in the series I recommend reading. And then last but not least, The Legendary Asset, Six Reasons Why You Should Own Real Estate. You should. Everybody listening right now should own real estate. It is a powerful, powerful, powerful asset. Everybody needs real estate. Right now, we're locked in in Chicago. Can't really go outside, but we're in our you know, place of abode. We're in our shelter. Uh, we need this. Even if people don't drive, people will need a place to live. Even if the economy crashes, people still need a place to live. So that's why I love real estate is my number one investment. That's where I choose to invest 90% of my money. Um, you know, so, so with that, I mean, love real estate. Make sure you check out the book. And yeah, absolutely. Um, Eugene says, buy back the block. Most definitely. We're buying a block, one block at a time. We're buying in, in Auburn, Gresham, Chatham, South Shore, you know, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go after Woodlawn at some point. Hyde Park, we don't really want to touch that because it's too highly inflated in price. My goodness, if the market crashed, Hyde Park will feel it the worst. Uh, we don't buy in areas where it's like overpriced. Price per unit, 50000 or below. Cap rate, 10% or higher. Cash on cash return, 20% or higher. Simple, right? We use these simple metrics, simple benchmarks. And we go out and do the deal versus flipping and wholesaling and all this and that. I'm like, man, wholesaling is another job, basically. It's a full-time job. I've, I've done wholesaling before. Flipping, oh, man, that is a full-time job, even if you have a project manager, right? And I know some people listening today can share those same sentiments. I mean, it's I, I almost went bankrupt because of a flip. I kid you not. That is a serious statement. But on a rental property... We're comfortable. You know, I, I don't I don't miss a beat. I know exactly how my 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 builders are performing. 
as a building, as the owner of the building, you are the CEO, by the way. Even if you have a property manager, you want to oversee the property manager themselves. Ask them for reports. Ask them to show you pictures of the building. What's going on in my building, basically? Right? You are the CEO. Even if you're in the Bahamas, you still want to oversee the building. I know every single tenant. I know every single tenant who's paid, who hasn't paid. Right? I, I get a report every month. Who's paid? Who hasn't paid? Who do we need to evict? And unfortunately, you can't evict right now. But who do we need to send programs or who do we need to work with? Maybe a payment plan so that we can make sure that our units are or we're actually getting the cash flow that we need. And that's part of the reason why the Body Foundation was created, by the way, to educate the same people we rent to. Right. And to get them abundance. We want them to buy homes. We want them to be living in abundance. We don't want them to rent forever. We love them as tenants, trust me, we do. But at the end of the day, we want to help create a community of abundance. That is the mission of the Badu Foundation. And check out the badufoundation.org, by the way. All right, so last comment, last question. And by the way, check out the website, jeffbadu.com. Once again, J-E-F-F-B-A-D-U.com. That's where you'll find all the books. Infinite Expansion is also available on Amazon. Check out the book. Get your mind right. It all begins here. Success is 80% here, mindset, and 20% actually doing. Once your mind is right, I mean, the doing is, it, it, it's not easy, but it's easier when your mind is right. If your mind isn't right, you're just doing, 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 and you're not really knowing what you're doing, then what's the point, really? Question is, how do you feel about tax lien investing? Or maybe you can address it in your next live. Yeah, I mean, we do have another segment on that. I used to do it, but I found out, hey, this multifamily real estate thing is where it's at. You know, buy a building, 25% down payment. The goal is to find a down payment. We usually use other loans or we use private investors. Or we use our own cash as a last resort. So tax lien investing is nice. You can make a lot of money, but just be careful as with any investing or investment. And it is basically a full-time job. Um, so I don't do it anymore. I used to go to Gary, Indiana, buy some properties, tax lien. You know, one year we bought 10 properties and we lost like five of them. It's crazy. Um, so for me, I, I'm like, hey, it's just not me. My thing is multifamily real estate on the south side of Chicago. Right now, we're, we're looking at 20 plus units, right? 20 plus units, million dollars or more acquisition price. We don't look at anything that's less than a million. Um, and usually, you know, 10% or more cash on cash. I'm sorry, 10% or more cap rate, 20% or more cash on cash return and price per unit, no more than $50,000. That is our only criteria. We got agents out there right now looking for properties like that. We just got sent a 30 unit building at 1.8 million, you know, and we'll be running the numbers and checking that out. But remember when you're starting out, try to do a four unit. Don't buy a condo, by the way. I, that's, a, that's a story for another day, but please try to stay away from condos. You literally have no control when you buy a condo. Single family, just too small to make sense as an investment. Multi-family, four-unit building only when you're starting out. Four units only. Yes, there are four units right now. Yes, there is an inventory shortage, but there is four-unit buildings available. It doesn't have to be this nice, pretty, fancy dream home that you've dreamt of. Get in the game. Get started, right? Get started. Get in. Educate yourself. The number one thing you can buy on this planet is education. Yeah, HOA fees at condos will kill your pockets. I know it firsthand, trust me. And those special assessments don't even get me started. Um, with the condo, the, the association can literally tell you, oh, it's $5,000 tomorrow. And if you don't pay, we can put a lien on your condo. I don't like that. With a 10 unit, I control every single unit. I control the entire land that's around it too. All right, is it good to go through, let's see, credit union? Yeah, I, I guess it, it's okay. I mean, I'm not a big fan of credit unions, to be honest. Shout out to Eugene, absolutely. Let's get it to the top. Yeah, we're buying a whole south side of Chicago, bro. We buy everything. 
everybody's too. Amen. Amen to that. One deal at a time. Yes, we do one deal at a time. We're probably only doing two deals this year, and that's it. Two deals, right? Eighty between eighty to one hundred units. And that's it. No wholesaling. Twenty deals. No flipping. You know, just two deals. Right, a million dollars or more um, per deal, and that's all we're doing. That's it. Just two, two closings, two tax bills. Um, you know, two settlement statements. Two mortgage statements. That's it. I like simplicity. I like doing more with less. All right, so that that's just me. But when you're starting out, you got to get in the game. Get in the game. And I would say get a four-unit building. Try to accumulate wealth. You can get it with 5% down payment. You can get it with 3.5% down payment. Uh, question is, how do I find property when an auction? I don't do auction properties, unfortunately. So I can't speak on that. All right. So should I just use my funds and my savings and just borrow against it? So you do want to be careful with that because when you borrow the money, you got to do it in a smart, strategic way. So should you use your savings to buy your first investment property? Yeah, it can make sense. That could be getting you in the door. Make sure you educate yourself. Make sure you know what you're doing. You know, so just... um yeah, Eugene says, kiss, okay? <laughs> keep it simple. Keep it simple, Stu. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I've had the most success with everything in life that were simple. Simple formula, simple systems, and just simple, like simplicity. Like this this number, this offer memorandum that I'm showing you here. Right? In, in reality, it was a lot more pages than this, but this is simple to me. Than doing a flip that got like 50 line items of things that I need to buy or make the make sure the contractor needs to buy. You know, it, I just like this better. I like this better because it's simple. I can read it. I understand it. I understand finances. I've listened to Grant Cardone. I've listened to all these real estate gurus. And yes, educate yourself. I wouldn't have known not any of this stuff without education. And then starting out, would you recommend buying a duplex on a property you own or tax lien for starters, buy a four unit building. And I'll end it there. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, please feel free to reach out. Website is jeffbadu.com. Once again, J-E-F-F-B-A-D-U.com. And also you can reach out to us, 773-819-5675. Once again, 773-819-5675. You can also shoot me an email at jeffbadu at gmail.com. If you need your taxes done, happy tax season, check out badutaxservices.com. We are taking on new clients. You know, we, we are able to help you and willing to help you. And my apologies again. We usually on the radio at WJC. You usually see the WJC behind me. But we're in a storm in Chicago and I can't go anywhere. So I decided to stay where I am. I do all my work. I just put my head down and I just focus when I'm here. And, you know, we still able to get it done. This is recorded, so you will be able to catch it after it's done. So I'll post it right after. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My name is Jeff Badu, and we'll be back next week. I look forward to continuously delivering you all some content. Thank you.